Gus Braille gave the blind a new feel for reading. Uh -huh. This reading that I'm doing this morning is taken from Investor's Business Daily <clears throat> by a, a, an article written by Scott Smith. <clears throat> Louis Braille desperately wanted to learn, <clears throat> but was frustrated by the lack of books for the blind. <clears throat> Fully sightless by the age five due to an accident, <clears throat> his school had only a few tomes that used large raised letters <clears throat> that filled bulky volumes without providing much information. They were also <coughs> difficult to understand as readers had to feel each letter and figure out what the word was and then the entire sentences. But the blind weren't expected to have much education anyway. Frustrated Braille began to experiment with codes that would let full books be published cost-effectively, books which could be more easily understood. By age 15, he was ready to help others learn and communicate. Unfortunately, the French education establishment for the blind who weren't sightless themselves, didn't understand the advantages of his system. <clears throat> but he was doggedly determined and persisted in getting it accepted right up to his death. Braille enabled the blind to become literate in many countries before the general population and he did more to empower the sightless than even Helen Keller. <clears throat> Braille lived from 1809 to 1852. He grew up in a small town of Coupre, about 20 miles east of Paris, with his parents and his three older siblings. His father was a successful maker of tack, the leather equipment, which was used as bridles and halters for horses. As soon as he could walk, the precocious little boy asked if he could try using one of the tools. And one day he grabbed a tool off the bench. His father was distracted when he picked up a pointed knife and tried to punch a hole in a strip of leather. It slipped and gouged his right eye. A doctor patched and arranged for the boy to be examined the next day by a Parisian surgeon who said nothing could be done to save the eye. It became infected and that spread to the other eye through the sinus cavity. Within two years, he was blind. <clears throat> As Louis's other senses began to take over for the blindness, blankness of his eyes, his mind was quick, quickly developing. Intelligent beyond his years, he wanted to share in the work of the family, and slowly he learned his way around the house. <clears throat> he was venturing out of doors by himself, and his father whittled a small cane for him. The sound waves of his walking told him if he hit against a tree, trunk, a wagon, or a stool, 
they made a different sound. Louis learned from his father spelling and how to trace leather leathers of the alphabet to write simple notes. At the age of two, 10, Louis won a scholarship to France's only school for the blind, the Royal Institute in Paris, where students learned to read the 14 large books in the library that had been manufactured by the school's founder, Mr. Huey. In 1821, it happened that a French army captain, Charles Barbier, visited the Institute. Now, he had invented a code of 12 raised dots and dashes for silent communication called night writing by the army on the battlefield. And it was based on what would normally be be spoken sounds, but turned out to be too complicated for the military. But it did inspire Braille to experiment. And so this became the right touch for Braille. Over the next three years, he invented a code based on letters. This code enabled the blind to read a letter or even a book. The next year, he produced a book with a new system called DecaPoint that led the blind, that let the blind write in a way the sighted could read by emulating the shape of the letters in the French alphabet. These dots would win fame for themselves and for their inventor but only after three more decades of resistance to the his system. <clears throat> in 1878, the World Con Congress voted to promote Braille's original system to schools throughout the world. And in 1917, in St. Louis, a school for the blind tested all the finger reading systems and found students could read much faster with Braille. So his system was adopted. In 1952, on the 100th anniversary of his death, Lewis's body was removed from the simple grave at Couvray and thousands of blind from near and far <coughs> helped escort it to Paris. The casket was lifted up the steps of the Pantheon building to receive the highest honor France can bestow upon its dead. Burial among the most famous heroes of the nation. He had changed the course of civilization by reaching into the minds of his blind brothers. This my tribute to Louis Braille. <laughs>